Welcome to Entrepreneur Life with me, me, Joel Campbell, um, and I am an entrepreneur, and I'm setting up for a meeting. So we've got a meeting today discussing the very relatively high level it is talking about the identity of Chateau Mallet Prison and the separation between the two jails and how that might look, what shape that's going to take and stuff like that. So it's a really early on like I say, a starting point, a high-level meeting, just to get people's thoughts and ideas. We've got the people in the room that do sales, marketing, operations, vision, um, detail strategy and stuff like that, just to have a discussion around what this is going to look like, what shape it might take, how we could do it, so on and so forth. So I've put the room together, um, which is just over here. We can do it up in my office. So I'm just going to go get a couple of bits to go in um, just to have that discussion. It's about half an hour, 45 minutes. What I'm going to try and do with this episode is this is the stuff that I've been talking about that I want to show you guys because it's the things that we don't normally show people because I'm in it so therefore I can't film it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck the camera up. I'm going to check with everybody they're okay with it. Um, They don't really have a huge choice because well that we're a business and we can kind of do those sorts of things in the way that we want to do that really to a degree but again we don't want to annoy people so I'm going to chuck that up there um, Paul can always blank people out I'm going to put it up I'm going to chuck the microphone on and basically we're going to film it see what we get and then it can be cut and edited that way and I'm hoping that you guys are going to get a really nice insight into the behind the scenes because this story now and we had a chat with Paul about this this morning entrepreneur life Really now, this podcast, this vodcast, this series is now following me as I build a global brand. That's what we're doing. Cove Group Global, a global brand. That's what we're building. That's what you're seeing. This is just us meeting, talking about one of our very specific businesses and what identity and what that's going to look like as it goes because it's part of that global brand. So let's see how it goes. A little longer than a few minutes later. Um, so I think we've reached the stage now where we're Shepton and Shrewsbury. We need to really explore the identities of the two sites and really finalise kind of what we're going to do. You know, right? <laughs> really finalise what we're going to do, how we label them, what directions they take. Are they moving together? Are they moving separately? Do they do the same thing? Do they do something different? And this was really more about trying to stay at that kind of higher level of what is that? So when we look at Shrewsbury at the moment, we look at Shrewsbury and we talk about, we've always used the tag and we've never gave it to ourselves, someone else gave it to us, but we've always talked about it as the world's most interactive prison tour effectively. Whether it's true or not is debatable depending on who you speak to, but by and large, we're a five-star attraction. People love it. It is very interactive especially the tours, which is why it says prison tour rather than just prison. It's only the the PR and the marketeer bits that kind of seem to just drop the word tour and become the most interactive prison, which is a bit more arguable. But that's how we've labelled it, and that's fine. Shepton has very much then just been Shepton, and specifically it's been kind of like the world's most haunted prison, based on you know the paranormal side, but it's, it had no identity. So yeah, and I think, you know, you, you know you're absolutely right. The consumer market at Shepton is different to the consumer market at Shrewsbury. In the holidays, we see huge high peaks, don't we? And it you know, holds its own, it does really, really well, and it becomes a destination. Outside the holiday time, it kind of sort of ticks, but it doesn't even tick some days, does it? Some days it tops. Um, and it's just like, you know, whereas in Shrewsbury, there's a, a, a constant, consistent flow, even in the quieter winter months. I think the, tour, uh, the consumer side, the holiday seasons make sense because of the amount that's in yeah, Somerset, the amount of destinations in Somerset, it's, it's just renowned for people going there. Um, but outside of that, I don't really, people don't really want to go to something and really out in term time, it's mm-hmm. not got that same kind of identity. I was thinking when you look at other attractions, like you take Warwick Castle for example, like it's a heritage building, like we know that. Yeah. 
but you don't look at it as that, you look at it as an attraction. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I would say that Shrewsbury falls very similar to that, like you don't necessarily yeah. look at it and think heritage, you look at it and think attraction, whereas Shepton so. is completely yeah, the other way around. Yeah. So like, when I, when I think about where Shepton could go, like I don't sit there and think, oh, we could do like, Oh, it's not literally, you know what I mean? Like, I know they've got the escape rooms, but in terms of like activities and stuff, I just don't think it yeah. matches. Yeah, you wouldn't do axe throwing and stuff. Like That's what that. I mean. I, just don't, I don't think it's it whereas here, but yeah. like, you yeah. can have a day here in summer where you've got like a fair in the courtyard and yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff, but you look at Shaft and you just don't, you just don't see that. So, here you get like your stag dudes, your hen parties, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, you get educationals obviously and the occasional corporate, but down in Shepton you just don't see that sort of hen party, stag do type private party, birthday parties as much because it is just a different market. But if you had, like you're saying, if you had educationals would probably be the top tier, then you'd have your corporates once we do some marketing and exercise around that and some awareness around it, and then almost you'd have like your guided tours and that sort of thing at that lower level. Yeah, perhaps that's, that's, that's what it is. And, and that big museum piece that you could tailor any way you want. Well, we will happily have the Shepton Town Museum inside the prison. So you can have the Shepton Town Museum, the prison museum, and then like you're saying, so other museums attached. And then, yeah. and then I think we've probably, whether it's in the same space or a different space depending on the building develops, you've got things like the travelling, um, attractions, shows, and, and setups, things like you know, Lego ones all the way back and stuff like that. So it feels like it fits that that heritage model certainly. Um, I guess the 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 next piece on it is, do we want to capitalise and utilise, or are we crazy not to utilise the line of the world's oldest prison? Kira, why don't you spend some time researching? world's oldest prisons, find out what dates you can get back to, but I know across the globe, I think there's one in India, I think that's the second one, I've got a feeling it's India, but nothing dates back to 1625 until you really are converting back to castles. Meanwhile, it's been um, quite a tough day actually, like there's been a couple of things that have happened today that have made it really quite it's quite difficult, quite hard, more probably for some of the team than for me, but these things, like when they have an effect on those people, it does naturally have an effect on me, and I've come away kind of thinking about some of the things that we need to do, some of the things we need to change, and stuff like that, and I came home, I was just so, oh, so all over the place in my own head, like I was, was going to eat dinner, and I was like, oh, I just need to... I need to get all this out, so I'll just come to the gym and have a session and have some food afterwards, so that's what I've come to do. And uh, I've got Jonah with me tonight, it's father-son night tonight, so he's just going for a quick run, although he's, he's resting at the moment technically. Um, and it's quite nice actually, he heads to the gym to do a little workout with, with Jonah, he's running, I'm doing a, a short arm session, but just again, getting it out from today, so don't sit on the frustrations or the anxiety or the anxiousness or just the frustration of it really and there's a few things that sort of popped up towards the end of the day as well a couple of emails that came through and just it's nice just to get it out I mean, it's so so important to recognize how you're feeling and also how you can and what you can do to help to overcome some of those feelings and, and how you manage those thoughts and those emotions and stuff like that and just you know just reset yourself a little bit so that's what I'm doing now um, but yeah I mean what you've seen so far in, in today's episode is by and large been quite a positive meeting of high level stuff like that but there's loads of things behind the scenes of actually getting there such a challenge and it just requires constant constant graft um, so and how do you know you're making the right decisions when you make decisions you know, that's the next challenge. Um, Here we go, we're going to see the results. Who do you think is going to win? Wait, Brett, wait, Brett. Any refunds? 
no refunds. In fact, the, the customers loved the experience. Hey. So that gave you a profit of £121.50. A profit of £121.50? Yeah. And Tim, what about your team? Well, they made total sales of £1,484. But they spent a lot, lot less. Oh. They only spent £626. Oh, shit. Any refunds? Well, also, I spoke to a lot of the guests afterwards. And they love the experience. Oh, there was no refunds at all, oh. given the total profit of eight hundred and fifty eight. No! <laughs> so, I'm sending you to the Crystal Maze Live experience. That's cool. Live. So you have fun. Well, I've got to say, one hundred and twenty one quid. We must have done slightly better because we managed to buy a prison of more than one and a half million quid from the profit we made. So we've well, done all right. Go away. <laughs> but I can tell you. 24 hours later. It's 10 to 10. It's Friday evening. I've just done a 12 hour day. Fucking knackered. I'm just going to go and sit down, watch some trashy TV, chill out for half an hour, 40 minutes, maybe have a whiskey, have a little something to eat, and just. It's me done. That's it. It's my Friday done. Bye bye. <laughs> Early the next morning. It's Ten past five. It's Saturday. Yesterday was a really funny old day. I hadn't planned on working all day at the prison, but I did end up staying there for the twelve hours and doing very different bits. And one of the things that's kind of really alluded to me this week, one of the things that I've really kind of struggled with a little bit this week, is the success that we're currently seeing in terms of the businesses are doing pretty well they're, they're doing well they're doing they're doing good they, you know everyone's working hard they're doing well um companies looking okay you know things are going generally kind of pretty well and the ebbs and their flows and peaks and troughs and i kind of just realized this week i think we just kind of found ourselves in a position this week and i found myself in a position this week going, okay this is slightly new territory for us so it's slightly new territory for me so for example the accountant said to me the other day you need to go and get a new car and you need to get an electric car because of the tax efficiency of it and you know it just makes more sense than what you're doing at the moment to have an electric car and to get the most tax efficiency you need to buy a new one and you know do it through the company obviously do it on a, on a contracted basis over you know three four years whatever it's going to be so I started looking at it and suddenly I'm looking at buying a brand new car and I'm kind of like, when did that happen? When did we get to a point where I don't have to drive? And I quite like driving my Insignia, but my, you know, five grand Insignia as it was, which is probably worth like two now, which is pretty beaten up and battered. And, you know, it's fine. It gets me, you know, to where I need to be and stuff like that. It does cost a little bit each year to run and kind of get through the OATs and maintain and stuff like that. But from doing that, and the accountant's like, just go and buy a new car. So it could be anywhere from 40, 50, 60, 70 grand. And I'm just like, when did that happen? I, I'm not complaining at all. I'm just saying that that's something I've been trying to get used to and, and really kind of hit me yesterday was this air of, you know, what this world looks like. When did that suddenly creep up on us and become a thing? Um, so I've been out today. I've been out. Uh, I've been out with Emma, and we've been, you know, out two of us having a look at cars. We've gone to see BMW. We've gone to see Audi. We've gone to see Mercedes. We've been to see Jag. Booked some test drives for later in the week and stuff like that. And just, you know, just starting to move in a slightly different way. Um, but yeah. A anyway, so I just kind of felt like I wanted to hit the gym today. It's Saturday, so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink a little bit tonight. I'm gonna have a couple of rums. I'm probably going to eat some. I've got some. I've got some. Bought some rum truffles earlier, so I'm going to eat some rum truffles. I'm going to drink some rum. It's going to be a rum evening. Um, I might eat some crisps. So I was kind of like, I'm, I'm going to go for a good run. I'm going to go and do. I've got shoulders today, so it runs, runs. I'm off the runs. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to do my shoulder workout, and then I'm going to go and have some homemade vegetable soup, with a little bit of bread, maybe some cheese, some olives, um, and then. I kind of feel like I've done what I need to do. So I have then earned being able to drink some rum and eat some rum truffles and sit down, maybe eat some crisps and just watch some crappy TV and just kind of 
do a little bit of work as I'm doing that. And that's going to be my Saturday evening. So I think the one thing I will finish with is yesterday. People, people talk a lot about you know, how we get to where we are and what we do and stuff like that. And yesterday, it was Friday, and I was watching people posting about different things as they were out and about. And I did a 12-hour shift, and I didn't get home until, like... I did the video, you would have seen it, but I didn't get home until, like, half nine. Just after half nine, quarter to ten, was when I walked it through the door. And those are the kind of sacrifices that happen, although I was actually out late because I picked my daughter up from gymnastics. She doesn't finish till 10 past nine. So rather than come home in between from work and then go out back and get out, I just stay at work and I just work through. But I get loads done. So anyway, that's enough of that. Um, that's me out. I don't think I'm going to do any more on this video. I think that's reached the end of an episode, really. So for me, I'm going to say this has been Entrepreneur Life with me, Joel Campbell, and I am an entrepreneur.